So I'll get started. Uh, I'd like to call to order this June 13th meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. First thing we have to do is approve the agenda. So when someone's ready, I'll take a motion. My motion to approve the agenda. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Sure. Okay, a uh, motion from Gabe and I heard John first and we'll see the seconds from John. Um, those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 You opposed? Okay. Comments from the chair. Um, I have a few things. So I wasn't here last time. So uh, just run through some updates for folks. And also you can feel free to up, update me during these comments. If, if there's anything big last week that I might have missed, I, I did take a look at the minutes, but but feel free to chime in anybody if you have anything. Um, so the updates, uh, our, our bridge article about housing is going to be in the next uh, in the next issue. It's, it hasn't hasn't been published yet. Um, so early July, I believe, uh, is when we can expect to see that. It's gonna be published as a commentary. Um, they had me cut down the words. I, I ended up cutting, I don't know, like 30, 40 words. Um, they also, she also asked for a bio, even though it was a planning commission document. Um, so they have a bio for me on there. Um, so, so that's happening. Uh, they were agreeable to future commentaries in a similar way. Cause we had talked about doing the solar shading and, uh, and density discussions the same way. Um, so they're they're ready to agree to that. Uh, the The editor's name is Cassandra, um, so she was agreeable. Uh, so th I'll use that as a segue to say that uh, I think we probably should get started soon on drafting a solar shading article. So um, if John or Jeff or, or anyone else that has like notes about the solar shading issue wants to send those along to me. I can draft something um, in the next few weeks, hopefully, and then share that with the group just so we have that ready to go. Because uh, we are going to probably crank up how much activity we're doing on the city plan pretty soon. So so let's go ahead and just get ahead on that um, while, while we're not too busy. Another thing I think I'd like to try to get headed or get a head start on is uh, we had talked about doing an optional arts and culture chapter. So I might take a stab at that and circulate it with um, the existing city uh, committees that we have. Um, and when I say take a stab at it, just take a stab at some of the like aspirations and goals and and things. Um, and if that sounds okay with you, Mike, like would that help take anything off your plate if I put in a little bit of preliminary work on that? Got some fire trucks going by. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, if you certainly you're welcome to go ahead and do that. Um, don't know if it makes less work, it'll probably just, it'll eventually get there. Um, but yeah, there there is an arts committee public art committee. Um, and then uh, you could touch base with Josh Jerome. He he works, uh, he replaced Kevin Casey here in the office. So he would be one of the staff people to contact on that. What's his position? He's the community and economic development specialist. Okay. Yeah, and I'll definitely be involving the Public Arts Commission, which they seem to, I'm not sure if I'm giving them credit for maybe things they aren't related to, but there's been a lot of public art that's gone up at the last couple of years in Montpelier. So assuming that was them, they've been busy, seems good. Um, okay, so so those are some things hoping to work on really soon. Those the the solar shading article in the arts and culture chapter. Uh, a couple other things. I think we're going to start having a high school member um, named Noah, which is an existing thing. It's just been vacant. Uh, so there'll be a junior from Montpelier High School who joins our meeting sometimes and 
is involved in the discussion and they, they won't vote, obviously. Uh, but that's that's going to be something that's going to be happening probably at our next meeting, so everyone knows. And uh, in a similar vein, um, I'm wondering, uh, Mike, if you know when the when Marcellus position is going to be posted. I sent a notice to Mary. Uh, I actually had forgotten to let her know, so I sent her a note today, letting her know that Mary uh, or that um, Marcella isn't on the commission anymore. So we'll have to get another position posted. So if anybody knows anyone, it'll be um, position will be getting posted at some point soon. Okay. And so what, what maybe uh, what, a month from now, or when do you think the city council will? Uh, the next council meeting is next week. So that obviously doesn't fit into anybody's schedule, but the meeting after that isn't for like another five weeks. I want to say it's like July 27th. So okay. if people are thinking it'll probably get posted in that window of time. So if people think of something getting getting a, an application filled out by July 20th would get somebody appointed on the 27th. Otherwise, it's not till mid August. Is it possible if we have someone uh, be between now and the next meeting apply or does there need to be some kind of minimum posting period and I don't know it certainly if they if they fill out an application and get it to Mary by Friday by this Friday it's something they could the council could certainly consider um, filling it in that way but I don't know the official rules of getting it if somebody just says I, I heard there was a vacancy I'd like to get appointed maybe they'll appoint them right away okay that's that's helpful to know um, uh, okay, so I think that's about it for comments. Does anyone have anything they want to share? Okay. Well, the next thing on the agenda is an election of a vice chair. Since we barely have a quorum, um, yeah, it's going to take a unanimous vote. Um, so first off, I guess I would say, does does anyone have a nomination in mind. I'd like to nominate Mr. Gabriel Lejeunesse, the uh, vice chair of the planning commission. Very, very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. I think before we're going to have this discussion, I would actually, I guess maybe we should have talked about reordering the agenda because I don't feel comfortable until we have the Vermont, the Central Vermont Planning Commission figured out. Um, okay, well, we can we can do that. We can we can skip ahead to that discussion. It's on the agenda next, and then we'll revisit this. Um, so we'll put a pause on that nomination and open up the next item, uh, which is CVRPC. There's only four of us here um which makes that more difficult but before we had talked about marcella being the main person for a while and gabe filling in from time to time as an alternate that plan is destroyed uh if if gabe's going to take on any new responsibilities or if anyone's going to take on new responsibilities um then then we've got to take that into account when looking at the cvrpc um so first off Jeff or John, do either of you have any interest in filling in in some capacity to help with CVRPC? I don't think I can in good faith uh, commit to taking anything on. And uh, I'll have to uh, ditto that. Um, my available time is uh, different than when I initially brought that up in the early spring. Okay, um, that's that's fair. Uh, I mean, we still have Ariane and we have Aaron, uh, and uh, so we can figure something out. I think that uh, it's it's a slightly more important to make sure that the vice chair situation's taken care of. Um, Gabe, have you been officially put into that position by the city council or anything like the CVRPC stuff? 
I think there was a, a nomination that had to go forward and we ha we need to have some representation. I don't mind continuing to act as the, you know, as our representative until we figure things out. I just feel like, you know, you look at your capacity, how many things can you take on? And I, the thing about the, you know, the vice is that I'm going to be in these meetings anyway. So if it's just having someone who can, you know, conduct the business when Kirby's out and there certainly could be other things that a vice might take on, but I'm okay with that because I'm already going to be here. Um, but to do that with whatever may that may entail, if there's you know some additional work that's needed to be done, and to be the only sole representative at the Central Vermont, I I can't do it. It's just too the, much. So, so so for the vice position, I mean the way it's been done in the past, like when I was the vice, it was this way, and the way that that Aaron and Marcella, um, you know, took on the position was. Uh, the vice has involvement in putting together the agenda for the week, which is just a, which is usually a matter of just reviewing what Mike puts together. And if anything springs to mind, you can comment. Otherwise, you can even be silent. And um, and then and you know, I, Mike and I'll take care of it. That's the biggest thing, which is not much. Um, and then whatever additional things you could take on uh, or want to take on. Um, so from there, it's flexible. Uh, and then the other part of that position is just yeah to fill in and running the meetings if I'm if I'm out. If John is the person that you're um, that you're thinking about. Would they be interested in in serving on that Central Vermont Planning Commission as well? It's possible they'd certainly be qualified. Um, but uh, you know, maybe getting ahead of ourselves, committing them to joining. Right. The, right. They haven't. They haven't said that they'd be on board for joining the planning commission. Um, so, <laughs> One thing at a time, right? Yeah. Right. Well, Aaron's on. Aaron must have heard this was going on. He's he's ready to volunteer. So, Aaron, uh, to uh, to let you know what's going on is. We've got the vice chair position that's open. We saw, we also have this the CVRPC stuff that's up in the air with with Marcella's departure. Um, John had nominated Gabe to fill in for vice chair, but Gabe had also already committed to be an alternate type for the CVRPC. So we're trying to figure out if Gabe were to take on the vice chair role, what we're going to do with CVRPC. But we don't have Ari on here. We don't have a position filled. So we have some complete inform incomplete information about the CVRPC. Uh, do you have any thoughts, Aaron, about that info download? He might not Is that like a complicated no, I just, I I just joined. So. Up for... I, just, I just got on, so I don't know what's going on. Sorry. <laughs> Did, did, I, you my, did you hear my whole nomination, update? I that nomination, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, I would just say, I guess I would just say this, is that uh, as long as everyone knows that I, I think we need to get somebody into that CVRPC position, you know, Mike was the alternate before, and he could go back into that, but I think we need somebody besides me in that role. So as long as we go into that knowing that, I'm, I'd be okay you know, serving Kirby. Okay, and and I'm fine with with um, you and Mike holding on the fort for now, and then us readjusting that in the in the near term. Um, do we have okay? So so CVRPC thing, we're gonna just keep the status quo, which is. Officially, Marcella's spot is vacant. Gabe's the in there as the alternate, and um, and we're gonna have to figure that out when we when more of the pieces come together. Um, so that's I think that's that's what it sounds like we're gonna do with that, um, and we're not gonna vote on anything there. Uh, so let's so let's drop that for now and return to the vice chair conversation. We have one nomination for Gabe. Um, we haven't had any discussion of that. Um, is are there are there any other possible nominations? Uh, can I second Gabe's nom nomination, just unofficially? Um, Thanks, I think John. He has, 
yeah, I'm definitely keen on uh, his, uh, what I think are his primary focuses, which are housing and, uh, well, other housing things. Okay. Uh, do we have any, do we have any discussion of the nomination? We had a nomination, we had a second. Do we have any discussion of this? Okay. Um, is everyone ready to vote? Okay, well, let's just, let's do it, let's vote. Uh, so those in favor of having uh, Gabe fill the vice chair position, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so it looks like that was a 5-0 vote uh, for Gabe to to fill in there. Um, and we'll we'll put the CVRPC thing on the agenda um, next time and revisit that. We'll we'll have to see if Ariane has any interest. Um, might have to wait for the new person to see if they have any interest. That is, it is. It's usually the new people who uh, are hazed into doing that. So <laughs> we can see how it goes. Um, okay, with that, uh, that just brings us to essentially the last thing on the agenda tonight, and we're 20 minutes in, uh, which is to approve the letter regarding, uh, you know, the, that proposal about developer's reputation. Uh, I, I got a version of that from Mike. Um, we all did this this like 30 minutes before the meeting. And I did a quick like 10 or 15 minute edit session on that. And I sent that to everyone. Um, I can share screen, but if you guys would take a look at, at my edits, one thing, Mike, hopefully that what I didn't overstep and and you're okay with, with me doing that. Um, is that so I, I have a separate substantive uh, comment. The uh, in the email, Mike, that you had written, and and we had more of the discussion about this when we were you know talking about it um, a few meetings back. But the idea of the proper place for this being enforcement of code, and so in your email, it was like the third to the last paragraph. You went through. You know what that process would look like, and and that's the the letter that's written is very legalistic. It's as if the only factor to consider is about whether something's lawful or not. But there's a policy, a, a good policy point that you make in that email that I think needs to be included in here, which is that the proper place for uh, you know discussing violations of code is by enforcing the code, right? And there's there should be a process to deal with that. Yeah, and I think I was channeling a little bit, um, a little bit of uh, John in this one here when you know I wrote the other other one with all of the you know kind of the straw man arguments, and then when I wrote the letter, I kind of pulled out a lot of those different pieces and kind of really summarized because I, I sometimes a little bit you know saying less is. A little bit better so i kind of went through and just kind of summed that right up and said well you know what we agree to do is just do what we're doing which is what we you know we're already experienced in in enforcement we already know what we're doing in enforcement and that's what we should be doing um to address the concerns that these folks have okay um, yeah i guess and, I guess and, it, and certainly I guess we can add there. more it's in. just not quite as i mean you know it was a little you had some examples and stuff but yeah I just don't, I th feel like that's buried because I missed it. In the worst case where development takes place, violations occur, city staff will take appropriate action to enforce the city's zoning regulations. Maybe just I, break I, that, I, maybe just break that into its own separate paragraph so it stands out or something. And certainly this is your memo to if you guys go back and say hey i want to grab that paragraph or grab those three sentences from from your email and insert them in this is your this is your memo i wrote a draft for you guys to work with hey mike are you going to attach dave rue's 
uh, opinion to this letter? No. Uh, he made a rec his recommendation was not to put this uh, council's opinion. Um, he he wants that. He says it comes legally. It puts us into an, a different position if somebody decides they're going to appeal or someone's going to go forward. Um, he would rather that. That's why he wanted us to share that opinion in executive session, which we did. Yeah. Um, and then if council wants the, to review the opinion, they should review that in executive session because it really is intended for you um, and for um, the council. Yeah, I was just I was just more curious if the intent is to share Dave Rue's opinion with the city council directly, whether that probably an executive session or not. I, the, the question really is, is, is this going to be the universe that the city council reviews when they look at this issue, or are they also going to see Dave Rue's opinion letter? Dave Rue's opinion will be made available to them. That was why I kind of put it in there, and, and, and I don't know between, you know, yeah. you know, we'd be, we highly recommend you review the legal opinion of da uh, Mr. David Rue in executive session and direct any legal questions to him for clarification. Right, okay. Um, because, that's yeah. helpful because we're we're making our opinion and that's why I kind of worded that I don't know if that remained in yeah no I see that um, was just about you know this is our our opinion based on our experience advice from the director and review yeah, of the legal it, blah, blah, so blah. if 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 the if the thought is that they're probably going to look at Dave Rue's opinion separately as part of reviewing this issue, likely an executive session, my recommendation would be to pare this down as much as possible. I don't think we need to really articulate our thinking on what we think Dave Rue's opinion says um, and sort of sort of couch our thinking that way because I, I, I think I think uh, yeah, it's, I think it's just basically twofold. One is to just say, look, we've got this, you know, we got this opinion letter. We agree. We have a legal opinion from, from Dave Rue. We agree with it. There's a major case out there. Here's what it says. We don't have to contextualize that in this, you know, in, in this instance here for them, they can look at Dave Rue's letter. And then, yeah, I think the other piece too is the policy piece that we talked, that was discussed earlier, which is, you know, we've got enforcement authority <laughs> if these issues come up you know, we won't go enforce that way. So let's, so. yes, yeah, so let's, let's apply this discussion to, to the letter. Uh, so right now on this, on the screen I'm sharing, um, I think there's four sentences that summarize the Vermont Baptist convention decision. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable stating it there just in case there aren't city councilors who read the legal opinion. So at least we've, put a four sentence version of that there. Um, but if you guys wanna cut it down more, we can go that route. But right now it's about, it's about four sentences here. And then we move on to this Essex rule discussion, which is a slightly different thing. Um, and I didn't touch that. I think the Essex rule discussion is fine. I, I, I worry about putting in any analysis on the Vermont Baptist decision, because it's sort of, it frames up the letter in a way that sort of puts us out there as acting sort of as like counsel to that city council, which I don't think we should do. Um, I think we should just refer them to look at Dave Rue's letter. Okay, so this this part that's highlighted on the screen now would be the description. I I did I did rephrase it when I went in and um, worked on this, but it does it does restate and apply the holding from that case to this question, which is kind of what Aaron's saying. He wants to, he wants us to basically avoid applying the law to anything because that would be like legal advice. What are others' thoughts? Yeah, I just, about? I just give a little, if you. I mean, my thought, I was I was trying to keep out of that. I chose that one case because I think I'll, I'll give you a little bit of my thoughts as I was drafting it was that 
Um, I didn't want to go and start getting into a legal argument or citing cases, but this one case is a pretty clear case, and it's a pretty clear determination that says that we cannot use somebody's identity in the making of a decision. Um, and so I, I felt rephrasing that, whether it's how I worded it or how you worded it, a, a little explanation of what that case said, I think is important. Um, yeah, and I, I agree. I think the parenthetical that comes after the citation is fine and perfectly appropriate. It, it, it's, it's the sort of the analysis behind it that starts with Kirby's, you know, analysis after it. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with the analysis. I just, I, I get, I worry that it puts us in a place that we don't want it to be when, if we're sort of giving our take on it again, because we have, we have a letter from council that spells this all out for them if they want to dig into it. Um, and I, yeah, and, I agree. And to the extent that there's any, if there's any wording in Dave Rue's letter that is inconsistent with what we're putting out here on this letter, just well, he, avoid that issue altogether. Yeah, he reviewed this um, and he was comfortable with the the area, the, what was struck out. He didn't review Kirby's comments, but he reviewed the part starting denying a permit to the Boves based upon who they are as an applicant, not based upon the merits of the application, the proposed development of, or use of the property would clearly violate this basic tenet of zoning in the opinion in the opinion of the planning commission. But I, I agree. Um, I mean, that was probably part of my impression, Mike, reading it. It was like, it was like I was reading a legal opinion. And I, I think just the idea of, you know, that we are presented this and then recommend that you review that legal opinion yourself so you can, you know, understand all the things that are associated there. Yeah, and the reason why I also went into that was because of the next sentence. Part of their argument was that other agencies, um, Ms. Sherman's argument was that other agencies use um, other agencies and departments within the state consider and in fact require an applicant's compliance history. And um, that's not true in zoning. And so that was why I wanted to kind of follow up with that piece was just to go through and say this, this case is why. It's why we can't consider the Bove's history. It's also why we can't. We're not like the state agencies and we're not like these other boards because zoning is unique. It's got this prohibition. You can't do this. Um, I, I, I do like that, uh, that last sentence that was trying to, ha how do I frame the sentence that is struck right now that starts with this prohibition by the courts does not exist for some other types of regulations and uh, regu regulations and boards. Um, yeah, I, I rephrase that as. Oh, the, I do. I, I see that. Yeah. Context context thing. Um, but yeah, we could we could go with either one. Um, yeah, I just I just worry that if we're if we're sort of thinking out loud about what we think the courts might do it just i i, I just worry about that yeah. Yeah. yeah and i'm i can i'm saying this stuff not being an attorney who's trying to worry about sounding like i'm being an attorney uh, which is why when i when i phrased mine i tried to end mine in the opinion of the planning commission that was very intentional i wanted to make sure it was in there that this this is our opinion as the planning commission now of course i ignored the fact that a number of you are also attorneys which kind of changes the dynamic for you guys, um, you know, providing opinions as a planning commission that are not legal opinions when you're attorneys. So I can see your, your pickle. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was comfortable with saying this, but, but I get Aaron's comment and it, we don't have a, we don't have a lot to gain from redoing David Ruse analysis. So um, what do you think about this, Aaron? We, we, saying we agree with Mr. Rue's advice regarding the legal risks of considering an applicant's identity when considering an application. And then and then cutting this other stuff. Did you also yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah I think that's yeah I think that makes perfect sense. So do you do you think we should include another sentence there relating to how this might be okay in other regulatory context texts? <clears throat> 
or or leave it. Yeah, alone. I'm just trying. I think it. I think it is worth just planting a flag on that really quickly and just marking it for the reader. Um, okay. I think, I, wanna, just, I, I think we can just say, like you know, it, we also note that uh, you know while consideration of, of an applicant's prior history might be relevant to issuing permits and other regulatory contexts, that's not the case with zoning. You know, and then just, and then again, you know, you can just, that that's in Dave Rue's you know, analysis, I'm sure. And, we can, and you might make that another paragraph, the other regulatory contexts, and then drag up the we advise you piece yeah. again. That way we've basically... We agree with Mr. Rue's advice ends the other one. And then, uh, nope, down one. Down one paragraph. I almost feel like we can, we Where? can sort of, we can, we can. Here? Yes. I feel like we could plug that sentence into the front end of the paragraph that speaks to the Essex rule. Um, I feel like they might be connected a little bit. Um, Maybe not. I'm just trying to, I'm thinking out loud right now. Oh, the advice of the legal opinion. Yeah. No, the, just talking about how. No, that doesn't, never mind. I take it yeah. back. Yeah, I think the Essex rule is separate. Yeah. That no, was... you, or is everyone okay with what's, what's, what's here now? I did, I did do some caveats here where I said like our understanding and so forth, like where we're not make, making it as a factual claim. Everyone good? I can't tell if Aaron's like wordsmithing in his mind or if he's good. No, uh, I'm just, just, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I just keep rereading the same three paragraphs, or three, three same sentences over and over again. <laughs> okay, so, so Essex, Essex rule, I didn't, I didn't touch. Um, And then the last paragraph, I, I did touch a bit because it also, like what Gabe was saying before, occurred to me also that I feel, I feel like it, it was a compelling part of our discussion that we already review landlords for building code violations. And that's what this is trying to get at, but it's getting at it at a wrong part in the process, a wrong time in the process where we're preemptively. So, so I did try to rephrase a little bit, but I but we could go even farther to make that point clear. What do you think, Gabe? No, I I think it I think it's good. Do you have any thoughts, Mike, about? The way it's stated here. No, I think I think if you guys are comfortable with that, I'm comfortable with it. Um, I'll whenever we're done, I'll send it back to David for some final. Make sure he's okay with it. That or which I think we would be. At, we haven't added anything. His his big concern is whether we get into the the legal break into the legal cases. Okay, just for readability, I'm gonna accept all changes here. And... Let everyone take a look at this last part.
I did add the bit in about the landlord, um, which goes to the building code distinction. Okay, we ready to vote on this? What's the, what are we voting to do? Voting to approve the letter as amended here. Uh, and then with the understanding that Mike will have David Rue review again to make sure that, that it's acceptable for him. And if it is, then to pass it on to the city council. When is city council meeting next, Mike? Uh, my understanding is city council has this on their tentative schedule. They've scheduled kind of things out through months. This actually isn't on their agenda until uh, September, but we had already kind of started it before they, I thought they wanted it for the meeting coming up in yeah. uh, next week, but it turns out that it, they have so much stuff on their schedule that it kind of got bumped down and bumped down. And um, when I checked the weekly report, it looks like it's down in the September. But if we've got it early, we can get it off our plate and move it on and not let it get in the way of us when we or when we're actually working. So do we have a motion to approve the letter as amended here? We do. Okay, motion from Aaron, do we have a second? Second. Second from Jeff. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, those in favor of approving the letter for city council as amended, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Letter approved 5-0. Uh, I'll email this. This says MPC edits this version, Mike. Uh, All right. To you right now. And that's all that's all we've got for tonight. Um, Yeah, I didn't have much else to, to put on there. Just as an update on the, the RFP for the web design consultant, that is due on the 17th. So that's due five days from now, four days from now. So that's due this Friday. So we will have those in uh, for Friday. So that will be on your next agenda. So we can review whatever proposals we get in for Friday. I'm expecting at least two. So gone from one to two, and then we'll review those at the next meeting and decide who we who we want to pick up. What are the next areas of the, the plan uh, that we're going to look at so I can start just thinking about it a little bit? Uh, I think we've reviewed all the ones that we have, all the ones that we we'd finished prior. So the only chapters that were left, unless Kirby uh, gets the arts chapter going, is um, community services, and we do have to do the land use plan. So that'll be an interesting one. Um, public safety would be uh, the third one, uh, emergency services. Um, so however we wanna capture that, the basically police, fire, dispatch, um, maybe um, uh, some of the other ones I'm trying to have a senior moment on some of the other ones that fall into that category so but we'll get those going so but i've gotten a lot of the community services moving so that would be the next big one that i would be able to get to you guys but most of the other ones that i've written you guys have reviewed i might be able to get utilities and facilities that's the, the other one that's basically done i haven't reviewed it with the dpw staff because they're so busy but I might be able to peel a little bit of time away from them to do a quick review of that so we can review that one next. All right. So yeah, we don't have too many chapters left, really. So there's, there, 
there is some some info in the uh, community services uh, Gabe, if you wanted to get a head start looking at what that kind of looks like. It, I've noticed that there's not a public there's nothing in public safety right now. I mean, you can look at the current plan to get an idea because I I got to I got to admit I'm fuzzy about where public safety overlaps with planning. Um, yeah, there's not. I mean, there there are places. Um, but there's not a lot. I mean, again, being a city plan, we're going to capture a bunch of stuff that may not necessarily relate to, say, land use or zoning. Um, a lot of the community facilities, you know, the senior center, cemetery, these are required elements to have in your in your town plan. Um, so we're, we discuss them in those contexts, but most of those are looking at goals and visions that are going to probably be implemented through policies through um potentially some projects or some programs but there, there aren't going to be a lot of regulations that we'd be recommending for say public safety or the fire department or emergency services but there may be a lot of projects for emergency services um adding i'll, I'll throw one example out they've been wanting to there's an outflow um they need to bury a pipe for the outflow from the sewer plant that runs up to the bridge. So that way they can outflow, they have to pump it upstream a little bit to outflow it there during the winter. So that way it melts because warm water, it melts the ice and prevents ice jams. Um, they've been doing that temporarily. They've been basically like hooking fire hoses up to run it up there, but um, DEC doesn't like that because of the potential of it leaking and all these other things. So but they've gotten approval to bury a fixed pipe to be able to do that. That'd be a great emergency services, um, preventing ice jams um, by keeping an open flow channel. That's a project that's on their list for um, the fire department. So there are a number of these different projects. Um, there've been a lot of communication stuff. If you watch the city council, a lot of stuff on um, public safety communications um, and and all of our our changes that we need to have. We've got very old equipment, um, very very old equipment, and so there's a lot of plans to upgrade the, that equipment, make it more, make it the same equipment as Barry City, make them interoperable, so that way if you know something happens to our facility. They can switch over. Barry City can take over all of the dispatch and vice versa. Um, right now, we can't do that, or we kind of can do that, I guess my understanding is, but it's not as smooth as it would be if both facilities were operating on the same system and both had upgraded equipment. So, and there's plans to upgrade both the equipment. And so those are the things that we would probably capture in that in that public safety. Um, vision, goals, and strategies. What's their vision for making public safety, making things safe? Um, what are the goals? Lay out those goals and then lay out the strategies. And a lot of them are going to be these projects or policies um, that would probably make those most of those, as opposed to a lot of what we talk about, the regulations and the zoning and the, the codes. Is there... And there may be room to um, also talk about in terms of any of the equipment we purchase. You know, you hear a lot about fire chiefs want to get the biggest truck possible because it's a big fire truck. So that's really cool. But then we we end up needing to design our streets for the fire truck and and not the other way around. And sometimes the biggest fire truck possible is not this is not conducive to the best urban design. So hopefully we can maybe get the fire chief excited about the nimblest fire truck possible or, um, you know, something that allows for design of, of streets as narrow, narrow as possible that can still be accommodated by our public safety equipment. It's a good thought. Yeah, it certainly has been in, you know, that, that reminds me, John's comment reminds me, there were, in the past, there used to be a lot of comments about making sure that your building height of your buildings does not exceed the height of your firefighting equipment, um, unless you have, uh, you know, elevated building codes, because if you don't have the building codes up to a certain level, 
then um, you risk having fires that can't be fought by the equipment that you have. So you basically set a height limit of 48 feet because that's the height that a, uh, a tower truck could, could work a fire. But um, a lot of times that's less of an argument because you, if you have the correct building codes and you have a fully sprinkler building and you have reliable water sources and everything, that's less of an issue. But that's other places where these discussions come in where they could overlap with codes or they could overlap with zoning. But I haven't even started public safety. So um, these other ones have all been started in, in a vacuum in a bottle, but I haven't, public safety, I haven't even started. And part of that had to do with um, the new fire, the new police chief coming on board. There was a police, um, a PRC, a police review committee that was looking at a number of things. Uh, they were implementing a number of uh, other initiatives with the new chief. And so we really just wanted to kind of, we had other things we could work on. So we kind of left them to um, move forward on what they were trying to move forward on, let them get the new chief, get the new deputy chief and get themselves settled, get through their review committee pieces and then work ourselves back to getting to them after they're settled. So, um, I do plan to get get to them, but as I said, uh, community services, utilities and facilities, um, and then land use are really the three primary ones I wanna get through because those are the three required chapters. So Kirby then, are we just, uh, are we just voting on the minutes from last time then? Yeah, um, one last thing I was going to say, I mean, I, I don't know how relevant it will be, but it's an interesting thing to read about. There was the police review committee that put a report out last year, um, and that's, that's an interesting report. You can pull it up online, and I'm not sure how much it's going to, how much the content of that committee's report is going to overlap with zoning, but it's it's full of interesting ideas that were encouraged for changes and, and police stuff, so it's 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 interesting. Um, yeah, we can move on to the, to the minutes review if, if we don't have anything else that people are thinking about. Okay. So we have the minutes from May 23rd. If we could take a look at those. Let me know when you're ready to uh, move to approve them or if there's any amendments. I wasn't there, so I don't know. Would like to, it looks like you guys talked about the, some of the things I've brought up in the comments from the chair, the solar access issue. Um, so again, if, if, if anybody has notes about that, send them to me, please, because I, I do want to get started on the, the public outreach aspect of that. Uh, they look good to me. I, I uh, move that we approve the minutes. Okay, we have a motion from Gabe to approve the minutes from May 23rd. Do you have a second? A second. Second from John. Those in favor of approving the minutes from May 23rd, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. That concludes the agenda. So I'm open to... Uh, Motion to adjourn. Don't I be move shy. Move to adjourn, Kirby. Motion from Gabe to adjourn. <laughs> Do we have a second? From from Vice Vice Chair Lajeness? Lajeness. Lajeness. Okay. I'm from Tennessee, so I take uh, no responsibility for how I say anything. <laughs> Very good. Lajeness. Uh, okay, so we have, we have a motion from Gabe to adjourn. We have a second. Second. Second from John. All right. 
Uh, those in That's favor right. of adjournment, say aye. 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 All right. We'll see you guys in two weeks.